You guys, you guys like my desk chair? I, uh, I bought a real one a while ago. I, I just moved to a new place. Look at backgrounds different. Um, and I didn't have a desk chair, but I had this. So this is what I've been using. Um, I bought a new desk chair, an actual desk chair a while ago, um, but I haven't set it up or put it together. So I'm still using this because I'm that lazy. Hello, I'm back. Um, it's been a while, but I wanted to, now that I moved and life has settled down, wanted to go ahead and get back into making some Photoshop tutorials and other videos, all that other wonderful kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do today. And rather than wasting more time than I have already, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So today I'm gonna to show you how I created this. Thankfully, it's very easy effect and look to achieve. So what you're gonna do is obviously open up Photoshop, go ahead and create a new project. As you know, I like working in a square format. So I'm just gonna do 2000 by 2000, 300 pixels per inch. Any other settings you wanna change, obviously customize this however you want, but this is just what I do. So here we go, here is our beautiful blank canvas. And then you're gonna go ahead and take the photo that you want to add this effect or achieve this look with, and you're gonna go ahead and bring it into Photoshop. So as you can see, um, I mean, I just took this image at my old place. I just sat up against the wall, put my phone on a tripod, did this thing, whatever it is I was doing there and then just took the photo. As you can see, I didn't have any fancy lighting. I didn't do anything like that. The flash wasn't on. No studio or anything like that. I just sat down in front of a wall, took the photo on my phone, and here we are. So we're gonna go ahead and resize it, position it where we want it to be. And then the next thing we're gonna want to do is go ahead and select and mask ourselves out. Normally I use the pen tool to create a more accurate um, selection that doesn't get all those sharp, jagged, ugly looking edges. But because we're going to go ahead and just darken the outside anyway, I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool to go ahead and select myself. And then once you have yourself selected, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and create a layer mask. And then we will feather it just a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't matter too much, but just for the sake of example, go ahead and do that. And if you do need to clean up your mask, you can go ahead and do that as well, or select yourself out whichever way you want. This is just the way I'm going to do it. And the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and duplicate this layer, which you can do by pressing Control J. And then we're going to transform it a little bit using Control T. And then I'm just gonna take this and rotate it ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna do the same with the layer below that. Go ahead, Control T, and we're just going to rotate it the opposite way, just a tad. And then with the top layer selected, we're going to go ahead and switch the blend mode over to darker color. And now it's kind of got that trippy displaced effect, whatever you want to call that. You can obviously displace it as much as you want. If you want to get crazy with it, you can go ahead and do something like that. I'm just doing a very subtle effect, but to each their own. And now we're gonna go ahead, select both layers, right click, and we're going to merge those layers together. And then we're gonna take that layer and we're gonna duplicate it twice. So we have three of these layers. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna double click on the layer and open up your blending options. This bottom layer, we're gonna turn off the green and blue channel. This middle layer, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the red and blue channel. And for this top layer, you guessed it, turn off the red and green channel. And now we're gonna kind of do the same thing where I'm just gonna use the arrow keys and shift over this bottom layer a little bit, take this top layer, shift it up a little bit, and we'll kind of get that chromatic aberration effect. So if you wanna know how to do that, that's how you do it. And then once you're happy with how that looks, as you can see, we're kind of already almost there. We just got a couple other things to do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the background color to black. So I'm gonna select my background and go ahead and switch that to black. And as you can see, we kind of have those rough edges, but we're gonna take care of that. So to clean up those edges, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer above all of our other ones. Select our brush tool, make sure it's set to black or whatever color it is you're using. And then we're just gonna go ahead and cover those edges up. I have it to where the brush is very soft. That way it's not a harsh line, but you can obviously do whatever it is you want. And we're just gonna go ahead and clean it up. I took out the shirt in my last video and just wanted it to be my, or in the last one, so I just wanted it to be my face. And then once you're happy with that, you can call it good. 
Also, I'll sometimes bump down the opacity just to get those cleaner transitions between the background and my face. But once you're happy with that, we can go on to the next step. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add just this little bit of texture that we have going on here. So to do that, I'm going to take the image of my texture, bring it in, size it up the way I want it to be. And then we'll go ahead and change the blend mode of this to color dodge. And now it's added it to my face, but I also want a little bit of it on the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then this time I'm gonna change the blend mode to lighten. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this, create a clipping mask. And then I'm going to bump the opacity down to like 10 to 15%. And now we kind of have that nice light texture to it. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add these CRT scan lines to it. And to do that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new project. And so for this project, um, we're actually going to make the width of one. It's going to be one pixel wide. And then the height, it depends on how big your image is. You might have to experiment a little bit with this. Um, but for this one, I'm going to go ahead and make it 10. So we have a one pixel by 10 pixel wide image, which is obviously very, very small. And as you can see, we're going to go ahead, zoom in to this nice little white line that we have. And then we're going to go ahead and switch on over to the pencil tool. And then all I'm going to do is these bottom five lines or five squares, boxes, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and paint those black. So we have white and we have black. And then once you have this, you're just going to head over to edit, go down to define pattern, and we're just going to name this CRT scan line or whatever else you want to name it. And so once we have that pattern created, we'll come back to our image. We're going to go ahead and go above all of our other layers, create a new layer, and then we're going to press shift backspace. And now we're going to fill this layer with the pattern that we just created. So we're gonna go ahead and call custom pattern. As you can see, I created one earlier. This is my new one. Go ahead and do that. And now we have this CRT scan line that we've created. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna take this layer and also change it over to linear burn. And as you can see, it now has that CRT scan line look across it. If you want the lines to be thinner or thicker, all you need to do is either make the height of this one taller or smaller, depending on how thick or thin you want your lines. And so once you've done that, you basically have this effect achieved. You can obviously make any adjustments that you want from that point, adjust the background, all that kind of stuff, make it maybe, maybe make it blend a little bit more, exaggerate the kind of distortion in your face, whatever it is you want to do. For example, I kind of want my face to maybe be a little bit brighter. So I'll just go ahead, add an adjustment layer, bump up the brightness and get it a little bit brighter. The other thing that I like to do is I'll often add another adjustment layer above all my layers using the color lookup. And let's go ahead and choose a filter that I kind of like the look of. That one's not too bad. All these other ones. For example, in the original one I did, I used the foggy night and then bumped the opacity down to like 13%. And I was pretty happy with how that looked. Or maybe if I wanted my face a little bit more centered, I'll just go ahead and select all these layers, Control T, and maybe scale it up a little bit and bring it to where I want it to be. And there, that's all you really have to do. As you can see, we got pretty close to the original effect. And yeah, that's everything. Nice, quick and easy tutorial for you guys today. Hope you liked it. If you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe. I have a couple other ones already posted if you wanna go ahead and check those out. If there's any specific effect, look, or anything you're trying to achieve, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to see if I can make that happen. Or feel free to go ahead and check out my art Instagram. Link will be in the description below. If there's anything on there that you see, if you're like, hey, how did you achieve this effect? I'd be more than happy to create a tutorial on that as well. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.